This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. Twenty twenty four is going to be real simple for Zadarius Smith, man. Um, there, it's not going to be a very complicated or very long video. This is not some video where I got to find uh, uh, the the answers for Zadarius Smith. This shit is very simple with Zadarius Smith. In twenty twenty three, Zadarius was an effective pass rusher. He got good pressure numbers. His pro football focus grades and pass rush are what you would expect for a rusher of his of his class. Like he did a good job. The tape reflects that he was a good pass rusher. In 2023, the issue with Jer with uh, Zadarius Smith was he was a bad, bad finisher last year. He was missed tackle machine. And if you've ever wondered, why did Zadarius Smith's season feel underwhelming, right? Because you get these pass rush run weight numbers, you get these pressure percentages. But the reason you felt like he was underwhelming is simple, missed tackles. He had a absolutely horrid missed tackle percentage of 27.6, which is easily the highest of any defender on the Cleveland Browns. And another thing to keep an eye on, Cleveland Browns weren't the surest tacklers in the world last year. So it's not like he was competing with the most sure bunch in the NFL when it comes to sure tackling. The Browns take a ton of risk, especially with the smaller players. You're going to have guys who miss a ton of tackles when you play that way. So being the highest there when you're not like a DB, like Grant Delpit missing a ton of tackles, that's acceptable because Grant Delpit is going to gamble. Zadarius Smith missing 27.6% of his uh, of his tackles is, is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Like hey, that that is just a nutty number there. That's not only number 1 for the Cleveland Browns. That's number 6 in the NFL. It's bad. That's really really bad. And look, he doesn't have to be the surest tackler in the world. I think the year before he was at 15%, uh, he had a 15% missed tackle percentage. But he does need to get under 20. 27 is nuts dog it's absolutely nuts let's look at the film with Zadarius see what he does well see what he needs to improve let's do it when I watch Zadarius Smith's tape I think to myself this is a player who was like if you combined all the missed tackles maybe five inches away from being a great uh player and having a pro bowl season but he missed a lot of tackles. Like, I think that's just going to pop up a lot with Zadarius. Now, what we know about Zadarius Smith as a football player is that he's not the greatest run defender in the world. He's never been the greatest run defender in the world. You should not rely on Zadarius Smith to be a great run defender because that's setting yourself up for disappointment. That's not what Zadarius Smith is on the football field to be. What Zadarius Smith is on the football field to be is quite simple. He's a hellraiser. He's supposed to get downfield. He's supposed to get pressure. And you want him to hopefully come down with like seven to 10 sacks a year. The issue with Zadarius Smith this year was that he did not come down with the amount of sacks that you would want Zadarius Smith to come up with. Now, the question you have to ask yourself when you evaluate Zadarius Smith and if Zadarius Smith is going to be good for the Browns in the upcoming season isn't really about the sack numbers, but about the question of if he was able to create a lot of havoc still at that edge rusher position, right? Is the Darius Smith had less than seven to 10 sacks and it's because he's not getting any pressure. It's because he's not able to penetrate. It's because he looks like he just doesn't have the skills to be the guy that he was. That's going to be a giant red flag. Like, that means he's cooked. He's washed. He can't do it anymore. If Zadarius Smith has less than seven to 10 sacks because he's just missing tackles, while that's going to be frustrating in the moment while it's happening, and yes, it was frustrating in the moment while it was happening, ultimately is not as concerning because those things are fixable. You can have a better season where you don't miss as many tackles and given Zadarius' track record, I imagine that he's not going to miss as many tackles last year. Now, if you're asking me, why was Zadarius Smith missing a ton of tackles last year? 
I don't have a great answer. There's no great answer in the film for this. Some people have blamed it on an ankle injury. I don't think there's enough there to fully blame it on the ankle injury. Some people have blamed it on the aggressive nature of a Jim Swartz defense. And I think there's more there to provide as evidence on why that would happen. Um, the other year where Zadaria Smith missed as many tackles as he did was in Baltimore. And while Baltimore does not play a wide nine like Cleveland, it's not that different what they were doing back when he was with Baltimore because Baltimore was ultra aggressive with blitzing um, under what was it? Wink Martindale at the time. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was Wink Martindale. But the Ravens 3-4 has always been a downhill attacking one where they kind of get their pass rush by committee. We've talked about this all the time on AFC North Talk. Um, but, yeah, that's what that that's the last time I think Zedarius missed a ton of tackles like that was when he was in a downhill attacking defense. And maybe that has something to do with it. But again, he's been in those defenses before. There were other years in Baltimore where he didn't miss a ton of tackles. I just think the brother had a bad year when it comes to making tackles. Like, I feel like we, we need to find a, a specific reason for everything that happens on a football field that we can point to and discover and we could be like the people from Moneyball or whatever sports movie where that shit happens so we can be like oh man I'm a genius I figured it out I figured out why Zadarius Smith is missing tackles it's because he was wearing the wrong cleat size or it's because he's lined up two feet from the hash when he's used to being lined up one foot like you know what I mean there's always this like smart dumb shit that comes out <laughs> Um, about players and people feel like, oh, if, if we just fix this little thing that this guy's doing, uh, we're going to change the tra entire trajectory of this player's career and it never ends up working out like that. And I just think that's because sports mo movies have made us think that shit like that matters as much as it, as it doesn't. Um, and I think with Darius Smith and these missed tackles, I think a lot of people are are really scratching their head to try to figure it out. When I think the answer is simple, and the answer is simply, he just didn't, he just had a bad year. Like, I don't think there's a greater explanation for it. You can look through the film, we're gonna look through the film. But, you know, first and foremost, I just don't think there's a great explanation for why that went down in the way that it did. I just think, it just didn't happen for him. And it's it's very possible that next year he has a missed tackle percentage of um, what under 20, probably like 15 is what he's averaged most years in his career. So, yeah, I just think the brother had a bad year. It's just one of them times where you just had a bad year, but he'd be all right. Um, but let's look at these missed tackles and, and some of the things that went down. This is one time where he does make a tackle, right? He was capable of making the tackles. He was capable of making the plays. And I swear, there were like five times last year where I think he just got bad luck, where he got a, he was there, but he just had a bad angle for whatever reason. And I think sometimes this shit is luck, too. Right? Zedarius on the twist there. He's still getting pressure. He's still super explosive getting downhill. Like Zadarius is still very good at what he does. It's just he had a lot of missed tackles. And I think that led to uh, his production not being there one. And I think also it led to him not being as effective as he usually is. Because when you do miss tackles, you miss plays. Like even if you get the pressure. But the stuff's there. He's still explosive. He's still fast. I don't think there's anything to be like super long term worried about with Zadarius Smith. I just think the brother had a bad year when it comes to making tackles. Right? Like that's rough. That's a rough one, right? That's a rough one on the tape for Zadarius Smith. We can all admit this. But dog, look at what he has to do to make this play. Right? He comes in inside, rip on Dan Moore, and then puts that arm out and just absorbs a tight end there. I don't know who that was, but just, I don't, that's a wide receiver. That, that can't be a tight end, small guy. It, oh, no, that might be Connor Hayward, actually. Like Pittsburgh in the nepotism, maybe having these five foot 10 fullbacks just because the other players are, are, they're related to players who are better on the team. They did this with Derek Watt. Now it's Connor Hayward. Um, yeah, and that, I think that's Connor, that is a tight end. Yeah, it's Connor Hayward. I think they didn't draft Randy Moss back in the day because they'd be with uh, Shad Moss. <laughs> but anyway, 
Anyways, uh, he absorbs his hit by Connor Hayward, and he's like the only dude back there still. And like he misses this tackle. And then it turns into a big play. And it's kind of like it, it, it's it's his fault. It is his fault. But it's just also bad luck. Like, I don't think it being your fault and bad luck also happening are mutually exclusive. And this is just bad luck. Because he's the only one that wins like this. Like, I don't even think Miles wins like this on this play. If Miles is out there. No, Miles ain't even out there. All right. So he wins crazy. Like, that's that's a crazy amount of stuff to get through to get to this what should be a five yard tfl but he just he just catches Najee at the wrong angle like there's not a great way to tackle him and he can't get around him Najee does a good job of whipping that arm off so you see what Najee is doing here right because i know some of you guys and why didn't he just wrap him up well Najee is trying to prevent that you see Najee puts his arm and he just catches him right at the right angle where he could put his arm at the chest of Zadarius and kind of wipe him away and prevent him from coming in closer to wrap and fit his arms around his waist. It's just a good job there. And then Najee makes his cut, which like a crazy cut for Najee to make. And then that took all of his stand up a meter because he, he ain't got no juice left after that. Like, but hey, man, Najee made a good play on him. Like, that's what I'm saying it was Zedarius. I wouldn't read too much into the missed tackle numbers. They were there. They definitely affected his play. He wasn't as effective as he normally is because of it. But I think it was a combination of, of bad luck, and he just didn't. He was just a little down um, last year for whatever reason. You could blame it on the injury or something like that. It could be anything. I think it's a combination of a bunch of things. He just did not have the strongest year last year. But I think he'll bounce back, play very well. I think we'd be very excited with what Zedarius has to offer for the Cleveland Browns. I'm not worried that he's like cooked at this part of his career because the pass rush production demonstrates to me that he's still fine as a athlete. It was just a bad year when it comes to him finishing tacklers. So I think 2023 was an off year. And if he does get under 20% or even close to 15% on missed tackle percentage. He's going to be one of the most effective edge rushers, especially second edge rushers in the NFL. So the potential is there for Zadarius Smith to have a monster year. He's just got to do a better job, maybe slowing down a little bit. Maybe playing with Miles was a bigger adjustment than he thought. And maybe he was rushing to try to get back there before Miles. But now he has a better flow of how it works. So he won't rush as much, slow down, make some tackles instead of missing tackles. Maybe that was the case. Maybe it was an adjustment to how fast Jim Schwartz plays. Um, but I think whatever it was, he'll make that adjustment and he will play well next this year. And I think he's going to be one of the most effective players on the Cleveland Browns in this upcoming season. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have an even better night. Peace.